Good afternoon. It's your CJ100, CJ270 professor. I'm at Cape Girardeau County Park today, walking around the grounds, uh, avoiding grading some papers that have been turned in, but I'll get back to that in a little while. Just wanted to point something out. This, uh, where I'm standing is, and I have the plat maps and the maps and the deeds, trust de deeds and property deeds of this property here. But this is, uh, I'm standing at a midpoint between two points on an old road line. There's a shelter up there on that ridge. And this way, there's another shelter up on the hill with a real nice county park on the top. I'm standing in the middle of a uh, Frisbee golf line. It's running here and back up to that shelter and then down around this ridge. So, you know, typical county park being used. And most of the people wouldn't know this, but where this shelter is on the hill is where the Cape Girardeau County Poor Farm was at on top of the hill. And as you can see, we're down a ridge here, and this is not farm ground. All the farm ground would have been above me where I'm standing now, but this road would have come in through the woods, down through the woods, up to where this current shelter is, but it would just be in the woods, a little clearing. And this was the African American Cemetery right where that shelter is um, there's probably 200 graves so in my research on the county poor farm this is one of the cemeteries i research and so in that wood line are about 200 graves and probably underneath that shelter and as you go along the ridge this way in the woods about a quarter mile is one grave with a big pile of stones that have moved, been moved on the top of it. Uh, an interesting story about that grave, which I'm still trying to find out more about. But right up here would have been three buildings, wood in the 1870s, uh, eventually became brick in the 1920s. And then a little further down the line was the cemetery for the white people. So two cemeteries on this property. Neither one has any markers except one marker on, that lies close to the ground. It says in memorial of the individuals buried at Cape Girardeau County Poor Farm. And there's one up here, like I said, in the, the cemetery for white people. And then one back here which would have been deeper in the woods for the African-Americans. So, um, as I'm sitting doing research this week at the County Archive Center, my old dog, her back end's about ready to go out. Too much duck hunting, running in the woods, chasing dummies. This is what a 14-year-old lab looks like, guys. Eventually, we all age out. So let me get back to my story. My dog diverted me there. Um, as I'm at the county archive today, or this week, Thursday, some people came in from Alabama. Now we're a long way from Decatur, Alabama, but these people came in and they traveled the country doing genealogy research for their family. So they come into the Cape Girardeau County Archive while I happen to be there. And they're talking about their family and their family name, which some of the relations are still here in the county. One of the guys owned a very um, well-established and locally famous donut shop, a bakery in town. So knew of those people, knew of the family name, but they were looking up the individuals and the lady told the story that her ancestor was 
um, her husband divorced her. The story in the family, there were two stories. The family story, the one they told the most was that uh, husband separated or divorced her, left her, and placed three children out for adoption. And, um, and then left, or she left, something happened. Well, the other family story, the one she was looking into, was that he did not leave her, that he locked her in a room in the house. He placed the kids for adoption, locked her in a room in the farmhouse, and was uh, basically uh, prostituting her uh, for a time before he placed her in the poor farm. Well, when the more I got to thinking about it, it's like I've heard that name before, and it wasn't the, her family name. It was a different last name. And so I went to the shelves in the county archive and found the, the poor farm book with the registry, with all the information. And I think it was 1927 was the year. And I located the lady's name, the entry, where her husband took her to the poor farm and entered her as feeble-minded. And um, she obviously wasn't. This woman had a history of her moving back to Alabama and uh, had another complete family and many ancestors, including this woman. But typical of how <laughs> the stories you can get into and get these little snippets of information and then hear about the abuse and the neglect and the things that happened in the past that normally you wouldn't even know occurred. You just, well, you know, they were at the poor farm. Maybe they were poor. Who knows? This happened a hundred years ago. But the deeper you go, the more you find out these tragic stories and these tales. And um, it's, it's just, it's kind of eerie when you get to them. So... This week, our live class, we're interviewing a young man who is just starting out in his career as a child abuse neglect investigator. So he's walking into situations, you know, a situation like this now could be a hotline call that a neighbor feels like they haven't seen this woman for a long time, feels like the kids are being neglected. And this is a young man who comes to the house now in those kind of situations, sometimes with, with law enforcement, sometimes with not, without. So it's, um, it'll be an interesting interview and we're gonna do it at seven o'clock on Wednesday rather than six o'clock. I'll send an announcement out after I post this video and I'm gonna have to end now because my dog, even as old as she is, has to go up and greet everybody she sees so i have to go catch her before she goes up and accosts this guy so all right more later